Today we're going to talk about whether or not you really need to take actual Canadian dollars cash with you if you go on a cruise to Canada. Also um, some updates on princess promotions, some things I learned when I was on board the Emerald Princess last week. We're going to talk about new taxes that I think are going to become increasingly common for cruise passengers as well as lots more. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is Tuesday. It is September 26th of 2023 and I would like to invite you to please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out when you subscribe as well as if you appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up. I would love to have you all with us and look forward to seeing you every day. And I also really look forward to reading your comments. So thank you very much. Now let's start at the top with whether or not I think you should worry about taking Canadian dollars, the actual cash with you when you go on a cruise that includes ports in Canada. When we, when I was just on the Emerald Princess last week, we stopped in two of ports there in Canada. We stopped in St. John and in Halifax. Now, both of those had places that you could go if you um, booked an excursion or whether you booked it through the ship or on your own. They also had areas right around the port area where you could walk around Around. you could buy things, you could buy food, uh, whatever you wanted. One thing that I noticed in all of them, um, out of all of those places, and just this is just me, but I only saw one that would only take cash, that would not take credit cards. And along with that knowledge, they would take American dollars and they would give you American dollars as change. And so I really honestly believe that unless you have a very unique situation, you don't need to worry about taking that cash with you everywhere takes uh, credit cards like the Beaver Tails place where I got my poutine, as they called it. I asked for it as poutine because that's what I've heard, but she said that's how they say it there. Uh, but anyway, that um, that I just paid for with my card. Everything that I bought, I just paid for with my card. I did buy fudge from the place that only takes uh, American dollars, but um, it was $10 for a piece. Um, they just already had them cut and wrapped up and it was $10 and I had a 20 and she gave me a 10 US dollar back. So you don't lose any money on that transaction. So I just thought I would let you know I didn't take any Canadian money with me. I figured if something only took Canadian dollars, I would just have to do without it. But the way that um, Ubers work these days and taxis take cards, um, really everybody takes a card these days, it worked out really well. So wanted to let you know about that because I know we've got people wondering. Now, a really big deal, it seems in the news lately, has been a couple of instances where countries and islands are adding extra fees for cruise passengers. Now, we Norwegian has announced that they are going to start when, whenever a cruise departs from Spain or visits Spain on an itinerary. When you are in Spanish waters, there is going to be an extra VAT tax collected. If you're not familiar with VAT taxes, it's value added tax in Europe. And when you buy high ticket items, when you um, say you're shopping somewhere and you buy very much, they will give you um, the right kind of receipt and everything, you fill it out. And then when you go to leave um, your, your last airport there and you're leaving, you can submit your receipts to get your VAT tax back. Okay, that is like something, and Gordon and I have done that before. It depends on how much it is that we would have coming back. Sometimes we don't hardly buy anything, so we don't worry about it. But that VAT tax is something that Spain is now going to start collecting on cruise ship passengers. They said that they feel like people who visit there on land have to pay it, and they feel like it's only appropriate that people who are on a cruise ship also pay it. So if you are on a cruise ship and you are there in Spanish waters, you are going to have a VAT tax. Let me find it right here. It is 20% uh, for uh, purchases in the boutique and 10% for beverage purchases. So even if you have a beverage package, say on Norwegian, you get that free at sea, free at sea, and you get the beverage package, 
based on how much the drink that you buy um, would have caught like cost just plain out you're going to have to pay the vat on that and that is just going to show up on your stateroom bill now i am sure norwegian is the one that started the conversation and made this announcement but i am sure that it is across the board for all of the cruise ships there is no way they're going to pick one company and say that just their passengers have to pay it the others just haven't done a news release about it okay so look for that no matter what cruise line you're going on now gordon and i are sailing out of barcelona in february february 8th for the sun princess inaugural we are so excited like i can't tell you how excited we are but we will be there leaving and i'm just going to make sure i buy a drink so that i can try it out and tell you what it's like but i'm sure i'll just order a drink we'll pay for it and the vat will show up on our stateroom bill so wanted to bring you up to date on that and what does this really mean i think that they clearly um like they said they want to make it equal for people that visit on land have to pay that VAT, so they're making it required for people who come on a cruise ship. And I also, at the same time, think that these places are trying to um, look at everything and think of ways that they also can bring in more revenue, because that's an excellent source of revenue. They don't even have to do anything for it. They just have to pass the law and then um, the taxes will be levied and they will be paid to them. Now, in addition to that, also, um, the U.S. Virgin Islands are going to have um, a new tax for Royal Caribbean guests who will be sailing there. Um, it says that the new capital cost recovery charge is going to be $5 per passenger, and it is for Royal Caribbean ships who use the certain port areas. It's intended to fund essential work to improve cruise port infrastructure that will better support visits from larger Royal Caribbean vessels. The funds raised from the fee will be used um, for dredging work in Crown Bay and developing a third cruise pier in St. Thomas, as well as dredging and structural improvements in St. Croix. So um, this is going to apply to ships that come in and use that area there. They clearly want to make improvements, like they said, for those larger Royal Caribbean ships. So we will um, be aware of that. And I it's a tax. It's $5. I'm glad that, um, to me, $5 is manageable. So it's good that it's not, you know, like $100 a person or something coming in. But it'll be interesting to see how many more of these kinds of things we see happen as these cruise ports look to make, um, you know, infrastructure improvements, to be able to welcome new cruise ships, to be able to maintain what they've got for the cruise ships they are welcoming. Um, personally, I think Overall, I think it's a really good plan. I would really like to visit somewhere that would maybe charge me $5 and has an excellent setup to accommodate everyone rather than somewhere that doesn't charge but they're not really well prepared to have a lot of people come. So maybe this is the way of the future to be able to have the funding that they need to accomplish some of their goals. Let me know what you all think about that in the comments, would you? Because I know a lot of you, you are you are thinkers and you think of a lot of things that I don't. So I look forward to reading your comments. Now, when I was just on the Emerald Princess, there I am standing in line to disembark one day. And, you know, it's always the thing of, it depends on what port you're in as to where they put the um, gangway so that you can get on and off the ship for a port visit. And one day it was right there on deck six midship. And uh, that's also where we happened to disembark the day we disembarked at the end of the cruise. But anyway, you know, they have those TV type screens um, here and there where they advertise things. Sometimes they'll pop up, you know, like visit the future cruise office and things like this or you know try out the specialty dining whatever while well, one of the slides that was rolling through um, was actually a copy of and I so I picked up this copy and Gordon's putting it up here on the screen for you of the new princess promotion packages well not new this is how they've been is my understanding and so that caught my eye and I went to, when I got back on board the ship I went to the future cruise office to ask them about it and that's how I got this flyer so right Right now, um, to my knowledge, these are the only three different packages they've got. If you have gotten called by Princess and offered something different, please let us know in the comments. But I tried to ask as many questions as I could think of, and the lady there who was in the Future Cruise office was very gracious, but um, it was really interesting as I asked her some questions. So first of all, there's, like I said, there's these three packages. The first one costs $3,499, as you can see there on the screen, and for that money, 
you get $3,000 of future cruise credits. So to me, that's worth $3,000, right? 3,000 um, future cruise credits. You get a $100 onboard credit. So now we're up to this being worth $3,100. You get a five night premium stay certificate that you have to book within 18 months. And then you get 350 hotel credits to apply towards future hotel stays and those are valid for 24 months and one day. It doesn't say it anywhere, but it is my understanding and from what she said, if you wanna share some of those $350 hotel credits with someone else, you can share them with someone else. Just give them to someone and then they can use them. Now, one thing that has really puzzled me through all of this is how do you find out what hotels are offered? And I asked her that, I said, so if I'm thinking about buying one of these packages, how would I find out? Let me tell you this really quickly. So the second package is $5,999, so basically $6,000. You get $4,500 of future cruise credits. So now it's worth $4,500 plus $200 of onboard credit. So you're up to being, so that's worth $4,700 and it costs $6,000. So what's the other $1,300 going for? You get a seven night premium stay certificate, 600 um, hotel credits to apply, you know, towards whatever future hotel stay you want. And what two night city stay. I asked her about that, what the city stay is, and she's like, oh, it's just kind of like a hotel. Um, but that apparently comes from a list as well. And then the last one is $74.99. You get 6,000 future cruise credits, $300 of onboard credit. You get a seven night premium stay certificate, 750 hotel credit points, and then a two night um, city stay. Oh, two two night city stays. Sorry. So for the fifty nine, so the basically the six thousand dollar package, you get one two night city stay, and for that seventy five hundred dollar package, you get two two night city stays. So really, here was the thing for me though. Um, the premium stay certificate. I was like, are those just like four star hotels, five star hotels? No. This is how it works. She said that once you pay for this, you cannot see the list of hotels until you sign up, because I really wanted to know like what the hotels are, because that's going to inform if I want to buy this or not, right? And um, there is no way to see the list of hotels before you sign up. Once you have signed up and paid your money, then you can log in to the website for this. And uh, then you can put in like where you wanna go and when you wanna go, and you can see what hotels are available, how many points they cost, just really the whole thing. The interesting thing to me, and the thing that I don't, I'm not crazy about, is you don't know what hotels they are, right? Uh, one person sent me one and she was really disappointed. She's like, we signed up and a lot of these are like motel six level of hotels so she wasn't crazy about it but um like i haven't seen the list so i can't say so i was hoping that some of you that have signed up can tell everybody a little bit about what to expect put it in the comments send me an email and i'm happy to share it um I'm don't, i don't share people's names especially if you don't want me to if you want me to i will but um i really think it would help people know a little bit more about what to expect because when you look at it. Um, the other thing that's important to know is if you buy one of these packages when you're on board the ship, so you buy the package and then you want to book a cruise while you are on board the ship, you can use the future cruise credits that you just bought in order to be able to um, apply towards that cruise. So say you buy the one that you get the $3,000 future cruise credits and you buy a cruise, you can apply all of that to that cruise and then just pay the balance or maybe it pays for the whole cruise. You can do that during the course of booking or when you get home, you can call your travel agent and those future cruise credits, um, they said would show up just like regular future cruise credits do on your account so that when you go to book it or you have your amazing travel agent do it, um, they can see those future cruise credits and apply them to a booking. So that part seemed really straightforward. So if any of you um, feel like you would like to share your experience, um, would like to share what some of the hotels were, maybe what worked for you or what you're looking forward to, that would really help the rest of us out.
But I wanted to let you know that I believe um, they think the um, nice lady I talked to, she thinks this is available on all of the ships. Um, it is through a third party vendor. And I and it is it is a way that Princess is trying to get more cash now. It really is because uh, we all know the cruise lines are um, trying to make a lot of money back fast. Um, some of them super fast and are in a position where they're trying to think of anything they can um, to be able to make that money. And so I'm sure this is what it is. I'm just dying to know what the hotels are, how easy it is to book them, so that we can know if this is an amazing deal and we should do this or if we shouldn't. Um, I'm always just really worried about all the details, so let me know what you think. The last thing that I want to talk to you about here is, and I'm always hesitant to bring up COVID <laughs> because, um, you know, a lot of people have varying opinions on COVID. Um, to me, COVID's here to stay. That's what I think. I think it's going to ebb and flow. I think we're going to have seasons of the year where we have more COVID, maybe less, and all of these things are going to impact uh, maybe how many people get it right now in the area where I live. Um, the doctors that I know say that there is a lot of COVID going around now. Um, it's not, you know, school has started again here. You've got, um, it's slightly cooler, not really cold yet though. But you do have um, instances where people are catching COVID, whether they're getting it at the grocery store or at school or at work or um, just from associating with people that they associate with. And our Let's Go family members um, started a really thoughtful conversation over on our Facebook group, which I really appreciate. And um, so I just, um, and I got an email from someone that was on my cruise last week. They got home and um, weren't feeling good by the time they got home. Turns out that they got COVID. And so so why am I talking about this? I just want to let those of you know who worry about it a lot that COVID is still out there. Um, when you go on a cruise, to me, it's really hard to know if you got it on the ship or if you got it in a port or if you got it on the airplane, either on the way there or on the way home or any of your travels to arrive at the cruise port. So I don't always pin it on one thing, but I think it's really important that we always just be aware that it's out there and do our best to keep, you know, wash our hands, do everything that we feel like is the best thing to do to protect ourselves as much as we can, and then carry on and enjoy life the best we can. And so um, if you haven't joined us over on Facebook, I invite you to join us. We have an amazing community there, and I really look forward to reading your comments and hearing what you all share with each other. You all are amazing and I appreciate the kindness with which you treat each other and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. So if you have any questions about anything to do with cruising, please let me know. Also, if you are on a cruise ship right now, any cruise line, I would really appreciate hearing from you about how everything is going and um, some updates that I can share with other people. I've got a few to share with you tomorrow, so I look forward to seeing you all then. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take a really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>